It's the blue eyes for me. It's the Ferrari for me. Mm, no. It's the Super Kicks t-shirt for me. Yes, guys, I'm back with some more Super Kicks related stuff. Everyone knows that I love Super Kicks and I only kind of tackle things and I put my, I guess my, oh, this sounds very egotistical of me, but put my name on things that I truly love. Super Kicks is one of those things. We know the people behind Super Kicks and we know they're constantly trying to create new things and new designs and as you can see, as you see on the screen right now, a brand new kind of redesigned, easier to navigate website. And there's some stuff on sale, like some sweatshirts and all of that kind of stuff. Of course, you know, if you use the code Josh00, you can get free shipping. You just got to go to superkicks.com. That's S-P-R-K-I-X.com. You get some free shipping site-wide, completely anywhere in the world. If you want to get some stuff like some, some sweatshirts or a cool gold shirt or just you know, the tr what I like to call the traditional super kick shirt, that, that one you see on the screen right now. All different kinds of stuff, some hoodies and some beanies and some different kinds of wrestler designs and podcasters and all this kind of cool stuff. I love super kicks. I'm going to keep talking about super kicks because I'm very passionate about things that I put my name against. And, and this is one of those things. It's like, okay, you like me, maybe you'll love super kicks. You'll find something you love, feel confident, feel fresh, feel trendy kind of everything it just kind of fits with anything I, I I'm a believer in to feel confident you have to look confident and this is the kind of stuff I feel confident in it makes me feel confident that I can take on the world I feel like I, I I get in with today's society all that kind of cool stuff so if you go to superkicks.com that's s-p-r-k-i-x.com enter the code josh double zero you get yourself some free shipping grab something you love I know you will and then people will be saying it's the Super Kicks t-shirt for me. What's going on everyone? Welcome to Are We Recording Yet? Oh man. 2021 is in full swing. We're now in the second week of 2021. It's pretty like this. It's already, you already know that this year is going to go as fast as any other year. Um, and we're kind of trying to just stay positive and trying to be like 2021 is going to be our year. Um, I didn't get to mention this on last week's show because it was so previously recorded that I wanted to kind of um, say this now. Um, as you've seen over my Twitter over the last couple of weeks, I have a lot of stuff planned for 2021. Um, first and foremost, probably the most exciting news of it all is that Wrestling Reverb is coming back, kind of, in a new kind of form. They're going to be special one-off episodes that are just going to happen every now and again, then it's not going to be a weekly thing. Uh, but me and Kevin are coming back, and it's not going to be a podcast. It's going to be exclusive here on YouTube, or if you're listening on the audio version, it's going to be exclusive to YouTube. We're going to be on video, and it's going to be just kind of like a cool little YouTube show that we do. But Wrestling Reverb is coming back. You will you will feel the same kind of aesthetic and the same kind of vibe that Wrestling Reverb always uh, carried. So me and Kevin are really excited. We're going to do the first one sometime in January. You'll know when it's it's time, trust me. So that's kind of like the, the main thing that's coming back. Five Reasons Why is coming back and there's going to be, that's going to be kind of expanded and I'll explain more about that very soon. By the time this even airs, Five Reasons Why may be back anyway. So if, if it is back, disregard what I just said because you've already seen that it's back. Um, my Twitch streams are kind of still going as they normally do. If you want to throw me a follow or a sub on Twitch, it's twitch.tv forward slash joshrobinson00. It's kind of where my main focus is and will be for the foreseeable future is, is growing and expanding that. Um, you can also now catch me. I can now talk about this. This was like a week ago that it was announced now at this stage, but um, I'm a part of Love Wrestling. Spencer's Spencer Love, uh, he has created Love Wrestling as a kind of open love letter, letter to wrestling and and just kind of allowing people to share their love for wrestling. And I have a show on there. It's called Network and Chill where you can just, it's a watch along podcast. I'm going through the WWE network and finding some of my favorite and not only just favorite, just some hidden gems as well uh, of WWE women's matches over the years. And you just get to kind of chill out, grab a snack and listen and watch along with me. What it's like to watch wrestling with me, I guess, if, if anyone's ever been interested in that. 
So that is two, like a few really important things that is happening. I'm going to be doing some more stuff on YouTube. Um, I, I, if, you, if you've been following me for a while, you know, a couple of years ago, nearly two years ago at this stage, damn, I did uh, some WWE cookbook videos and I did some hot ones and just different stuff like that. Some more stuff like that is going to be coming to my YouTube as well as some vlogs and some more in real life kind of stuff and just different kinds of things and new little series I'm going to try out and just see what sticks and see what doesn't, see what works, see what doesn't. So be on the lookout for all this cool new stuff that I have coming up because um, I'm excited to do some other stuff and see if I can really get this thing off the ground. Who knows? But um, follow me. All my links are in the description below whether you want to follow me on any socials or Twitch or uh, whatever it may be, if you're listening to the audio feed, if you want to give me a subscription on YouTube, that would be splendid. Um, today is a really, really fun chat with Gabe of CFG Streams. You know how much I love CFG. I have low-key become a member of CFG Streams, and it's pretty damn cool to be able to have a group of people to just hang out with on a weekly basis. We talk all the time. You'll hear in this convo just the kind of natural vibe that we just kind of give off each other. So um, I'm really excited for you to hear this. So let's not waste any more time. Please enjoy this chat with one Gabe of CFG Streams. Hey, Josh. Oh, are we oh. recording yet? Ah, uh, you did the, you did the thing. What a perfect like way to, to introduce like to introduce you. Um, I mean, you heard in my intro, everybody, but um, this is probably going to be either the best episode I ever do, or it could be the worst because this could go <laughs> off the rails in a heartbeat. Because, We're going to lean um, towards the second one. Yeah, that's what I'm going with as well. But uh, tradition, I don't like to introduce people because I'm never that great at doing it. But I'll let you introduce yourself. And if people don't know who you are, who the fuck are you? Well, my name is Josh Robinson. Uh, I stream on Josh Robinson Double Zero. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Hi. Hello, I am Gabe uh, from CFG Streams. Uh, you might have heard of us. Uh, I am from Connecticut in America. Am I the first American you've had on? No. Oh. Wait, who else? Who beat me? Uh, Did Queen. I miss an episode? Queen. Queen. Oh. From, she's also from Connecticut. Wait, what? Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. So, yeah, I'm a part of CFG Streams. We've been doing this thing for four years now. Uh, we met beautiful little Josh here, out of luck. <laughs> and yeah, uh, actually, actually, what did we? I don't even remember. I think Is that weird. It just was one of so, those things. I'm like, I just, just, I just know these people. It was one of those things where, like, we followed each other on social media because I watched your videos, and I guess you watched ours for some reason. I don't know why, but you oh, watched ours. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, we just followed each other, and you were like, hey, you want to do something? And I was like, yeah, cool. That sounds great. Because I think I put up, like, if anybody wants to collab, right. just ask, because I don't that's like doing it, because yeah, I, I feel weird doing tracks. it. So do I. Yeah. I feel like I'm annoying people. I'm like, I don't want to be like, oh, do you want to come on? And then they're like, feel pressured to say yes. It's yeah like, and then it's all awkward <laughs> and weird because it's, yeah it's weird how we can just talk to strangers and play video games essentially like it's and like they become best friends them. exactly um it's crazy how that it, works it, yeah it is weird how that works it's that's probably the main thing i've taken away from twitch and podcasting over the last couple of years is like the it's probably made me a little bit more open just to be able to like talk to people just through the internet and then be, not be so nervous to be like, Oh, who are these new people? You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. It's such like a weird, weird thing. It's, I don't know. It's like, if you find something that like you both like, then, you know, it's like you knew each other for years. Yeah, it is weird. And I think wrestling does that a lot too. Wrestling is a really, I think it's because so many people, turn their nose up at wrestling and they're like, what is this? And then if you find someone that likes wrestling, you're usually going to be friends with them, especially in your real, like real life scenarios. If it's like, you like wrestling. Okay. We can be friends because it's all <laughs> I really do is watch wrestling or talk about wrestling. So I think wrestling is a very common bond. Would that be? Uh, well, yeah. Cause it's such like a niche with? thing. And like mm -hmm. nowadays it's like, Oh, you like, you like wrestling. And it's like, it's like, Ugh. <laughs> yeah yeah i do <laughs> you know what i mean it's not like how it used to be don't tell yeah, anyone I don't know why. because it's like uh wrestling isn't it i i love it but wrestling isn't cool is it it's not it's not, it's like not the cool thing, thing anymore it's not it was it wasn't it, it and then it's kind of going back to not being a cool thing to kind of openly be like it's not like a conversation starter because usually people would be like oh i'm not going to watch uh, i'm not watching that so i don't know what you're talking about 
Yeah, exactly. No, I think UFC took that spot. <laughs> Honestly, they yeah. took the coolness away from uh, yeah. men in spandex. So yeah, sad, um, sad to see. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's horrible. But all right, well, let's let's talk about wrestling for a minute because it's only natural mm-hmm. for us two to talk about wrestling. So standard question, as everybody asks, but I'm going to ask it anybody. Anyway, <laughs> when did it all start for you with wrestling? Do you have a kind of first memory of, of wrestling or of something that kind of just pops in your brain when you're like, this is when I started to love it? So uh, it actually starts before I was born. My great grandmother uh, would take my older brother Andrew, and she would have him sit on her lap, and they'll watch WCW together, uh, like '80s WCW. And his first match was Sting versus Ric Flair, and he just Heck. from Starcade, and that's oh. like the that was the beginning point because when I was born, I was already born into a wrestling fan's life. You know, like he yep. he watched WWF constantly. You know, bought the pay per views. Uh, you know, while I was growing up. So there's pictures of me, like, meeting Santa. And, like, instead of having, like, cars in my hand, I have, like, a Steve Austin and an Undertaker always. It was always Steve Austin and Undertaker in my hand. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, like, there's pictures of me, like, on the floor as a baby playing with wrestling toys. So it's kind of just, like, it's like when someone's born into, like, a baseball fan family. You know what I mean? You're yep. kind of just so used to it. So I never – I don't even really think I've had, like, a, a starting point, really, yeah. besides when I popped out the womb. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I basically no, into a I'm wrestling similar. ring, so. I, I'm similar because my – my older brother was watching wrestling when I was born. So I was kind of just kind of thrust into this world and then just kind of, I think a lot of it is like almost had no choice, but to like it because it was, it was what my brother watched and it was what my dad was watching with my brother. So it was kind of like, if I wanted to be around them, they were going to be watching it anyway. So I kind of just was just kind of like forced into it almost. And it just never went away. Like I've never had a time throughout my whole life where I haven't liked wrestling like in in a sense of like I haven't not watched it I've always watched wrestling of some kind so it's kind of it is weird but um so it's safe to say that you were an Austin person over rock as a kid yes oh my god yes the stunner was such a cool move are you kidding me (laughs) I was I was probably a rock person as a kid but as I've gotten older I was I'm an Austin person through and through like going back and watching throughout the years and being an adult and knowing what wrestling is Austin's way cooler than the rock but I like mm. Hollywood rock like that 2000 oh my hit, god with the guitar there's nothing beating that <laughs> for me it's just like top tier stuff but um I think it's weird most people that I talk about wrestling with you should always say Austin over rock I always thought it was more 50 50 unless it's just the circle that I'm in people are always saying Austin over rock is it just he's yeah. just cooler than the rock or is it there's think- something about him I think it's just his persona, like everything and people say it all the time, like that persona of just doing whatever you want without having any fear of repercussion. You know, everybody wants Mm -hmm. to kind of live vicariously through Steve Austin. Yeah, Uh, it's the cliche thing to be like, everybody has a boss they hate. So they want to that's why they love Steve Austin, because he beats up the boss. But like, even as a kid, it's just like this guy's like drinking beer. What? Yeah. <laughs> it, wait, he's bald. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just, it was he was such just a cool. Like he wears leather jackets. Like this is crazy. Yeah. But um, but no, yeah, it's just I don't know. I don't even think it's really ready to explain it. Um, The Rock was cool, but I don't know. I just couldn't relate with The Rock the way people yeah, could was, relate with Steve Austin. They found something with Steve Austin they could relate with. The person, even as a kid, even if I was doing it subconsciously, I always liked the undercard more than the main event. Like I always like people that kind of not everybody was liking. And I even still do that now. Like you probably noticed with the people that I like, they're never really like the top people within their respective companies. I'm always yeah. kind of searching for something underneath. But um, like You're I love speaking to the Maven Dust. guy. Oh yeah, you love Maven. to the Maven guy. So. Exactly. <laughs> so like I love Gold Dust as a kid. My older brother always tells me, I don't really remember this, but he's like, when you were a kid, your favorite was Gold Dust. Or like the first few years that you watched wrestling, I'm like, I wonder why. I mean, it probably explains <laughs> a lot now with the sexuality. <laughs> that hey, but I mean, it's like <laughs> Gold Dust was the man, was, though. Gold Dust was great, but I, I probably by the time I started to kind of, you know, be old enough to go like, this is wrestling. It was like at the end of the Attitude Era, so mm-hmm. like that's when I popped in. It was like the kind of invasion I kind of remember, but then I remember Jericho as undisputed champion. Like I vividly remember that. I remember him. Yeah. Him, Triple H, and Stephanie 
in a like a two-on-one handicap match or a triple threat match for the Undisputed Championship. I think it was the night after WrestleMania 18. And Stephanie yes. nearly won the Undisputed Championship. For some reason, I can remember sitting on the <laughs> couch and just being like so like invested in this. I'm like, oh my God, like Stephanie McMahon might become the Undisputed Champion. And then Triple H ended up pedigreeing her or something. I don't know, you know. <laughs> you know, standard stuff that you should be watching as a six year old. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, this man just beat on this woman, but um, it's, it's. Who turns out to be his wife. <laughs> How <laughs> morbid is that? <laughs> like that whole story of like Jericho and Stephanie and Triple H. I don't know how much you remember of that, but there was like the dog and the divorce and she was Dude, pregnant. At just one Triple stage. H and Stephanie in general, they were married because she was, whoa, she was drunk. She was or like drugged intoxicated or, drunk or something and he drug, he, like he drugged her and forced her to marry him that is, what is wrestling we first like, of all yeah we were like yeah we love wrestling as like little kids. different times really, my parents should have probably stepped in and been like perhaps don't watch this just now but my mom didn't give a shit as long as i was my, quiet whatever my dad drew the line at ecw one night stand for me he was like you cannot watch this my brother watched it so i was in the room over and i'm listening to it but i can't watch it and that, like, I hated that so much. I had to watch it, like, three years later. I was still a kid, but, oh, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to wait, like, I, three I, years I to watch watching it. watching that. So, well, this is... I don't, I'm not an old person, neither are you, but this is going to be, like, if anyone's a lot younger than us listening to this, I remember I finished school the day... Because, obviously, pay-per-views air live during the day. So, I was always at school when pay-per-views were airing on a Monday morning here. So, I remember coming home from school... And my brother had got a, a VHS tape recorded of the pay-per-view, which is very illegal, but fuck it. 100%. And we watched- oh, I have a <laughs> bin of VHS tapes and they're marked like different WCW pay-per-views. Hell yeah. And I yeah. kind of want to get them put on DVD to see like how good quality. They're probably terrible, <laughs> but I kind of want to see, you know, for myself. Yeah, but I remember watching ECW One Night Stand. The first, like 2005 was the first one. Yeah. And then it was 06 like, was the so. second um yeah the one where it was more like ecw not ecw versus wwe the second one although that was still yeah. good the first one was like whoa like the first one was that's just, the one with the that's the one with the two words matt freaking hardy yep <laughs> just like, um, it's, it's it's um <laughs> it's like that's a good show did you watch ec you probably didn't watch ecw as a kid then i was too young to remember but my brother did he yeah and my parents didn't like that he did they would tell him not to but he oh, would intense. stay up late when they fell asleep and watch it at midnight yeah. So it's yeah. it's weird going back. I'm sure you've watched it as an adult, but going oh, back even on the network and watching ECW, it's like that shit pretty intense. Like when yeah. you actually think about it now, I don't think that would fly now in a oh, in God, the world man. that we live in in this kind of hypersensitive world. I don't think that would really Mm-mm. fly. Not even just like the wrestling and the kind of, you know, the crazy stuff they're doing in the ring, but the stories in that were freaking no. wild especially like something like with raven with beulah where she was like i'm pregnant and then he just grabs her by the hair and like pushes her and you're like what is going on and he's like ah the pill say why did you skip a day like dude what is happening you can't say yeah. this the closest I... we got to that i think is when paul Heyman was running raw recently yeah and he was and having he like would... the stories of mike bennett and stuff it was yep. like, and like uh happening? live and lana like that that way yeah and then, like by i the was way, there live for that i was there live for that you were... wait why didn't for the wedding? Not told me this. That's my favorite wrestling wedding ever. So this is what happened. So we were there, um, and Daddy Justine. Uh, if people don't know, Daddy Justine is my girlfriend. She's part was of our also stream. there. Shout out to the Queen. Queen was at that Raw. There you go. Oh, really? Yeah, she was. I remember getting a picture because she's like knew that I love the fa- my favorite part of wrestling is honestly not the wrestling. It's the kind of wacky kind of sports entertainment side of things like weddings yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And I remember her sending me a photo, um, and she said, "I'm at this Raw," and I'm like what the fuck? I want to go to Raw. So <laughs> you, you guys don't understand what it's like to be on the other side of the world and never have the opportunity to go to a Raw Smackdown just when it's- Yeah, we kind of take it for granted. Yeah. But anyway, go on. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, no, no. You're good. So like we, we were at the show and you know the wedding starts and everybody was kind of like whispering about it. Like, is it going to be good or not? And yeah. then we're like, of course it's going to be. It's going to be something for sure. Yeah. So, um, so we're watching it and when Lana or uh, when Liv comes out, Everybody in the arena, if you listen to the reaction, it wasn't as loud as it should have been when she came out because everyone there was going, who is that? Like, we couldn't see who she was. Yeah. Like, who is this blonde? Because that was, she was coming out after, like, all the random people. Yeah. Remember, they had, like, the like ex-husband, the, the yeah, ex-wife. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we see this blonde, we're like, all right, who's this? And then we're like, oh, is that Liv Morgan? And then she starts cutting the promo, and we're like, oh, it's Liv. <laughs> but the she pop was when TV she was, for like, a long time. 
prior to yeah. coming back at that. She was she had like vignettes in that from what I remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where well, she was like in like the bathtub. It was weird. Y- yeah, I yeah. Really it was really of it. It was, no, I, it still doesn't really make sense to me now. But, but yeah. It, no, I was saying, but yeah, so nobody really knew what was going on. But when she was like, I'm, you know, me and Lana did stuff. Everybody freaked out, of course, because that's what they're looking <laughs> yeah, that, for. But yeah. I remember just tweeting that. Um, I was, you know how I tweet in all caps all the time when I'm watching <laughs> wrestling, but I was just like, this is wild. This is what I love about wrestling. Cause it's just so, I know we live in a world where it's like, some people love that. And some people don't like that. That's fine. I was on team. Like that was the greatest thing I've ever seen because it was just wrestling to me at its core is kind of a bit stupid and it's kind of a bit tacky. It's a and that's opera. why I love I love that's what I love about that's what like kept me in wrestling is like that kind of stuff like I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff anything like yeah. that and like do you remember little people's court yes my god oh that's my like god that was so one good. of my favorite things you ever remember the mini you remember like the mini royal rumbles they would have it was just small versions of regular size wrestlers <laughs> it was amazing I loved it it was so stupid but that's what I love I just love I could have a whole day where I just go back and watch segments and not even watch any wrestling like and I'd be super happy I love wrestling don't get me wrong I love any kind of wrestling and you know all the kind of technical side of things and I'm a sucker for that as well but I mean you see we're we're very spoiled with wrestling I think Mm -hmm. especially now with how much wrestling is on there really is something for any kind of fan but like we see so much that we kind of see great matches on a weekly basis whether you whatever company you're watching and i think we just kind of are a little bit accustomed to it and we almost Mm -hmm. are like if it's not fantastic it's just another match yeah it's just there yeah it's just kind of because like good wrestling to me is not that interesting anymore it has to be because you see it everywhere exactly like how many times can you watch a a dynamite and see good match like all of their matches are good matches. NXT on yeah. a weekly basis. All of their matches are good matches. And it's just kind of like, eh, okay. Kind of tiring. Like, <laughs> yeah, like there's so much. I've. It's weird. It's like there's so much wrestling now. And I've never been watching like less. Mm-hmm. I've never been watching so little of it. Like I'm watching just what I want. Because there's so much. And it's kind of overwhelming to see. Well, that's like, how I can't I've keep gotten. up. That's yeah. I've only really watched NXT sometimes in Dynamite. Because I got to keep yeah. track of one. Because, you know, I'm yeah. working, you know, I, yeah. you know, we got full-time jobs. Exactly. We love streaming and doing all this other stuff. It's like, we got to cut some things out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'll I'll only watch Dynamite Weekly, and then I'll catch what I want to see from NXT. Um, even though I love NXT, but you know, I'll catch what I can from there. Yeah. Um, but it's crazy. We talk about, you know, that Liv Morgan segment and how mm-hmm. different wrestling was. In America right now, that was a year ago yesterday. Yeah. That was the final Raw of 20, uh, 2019 which is pretty insane to see how different wrestling has been in a year. And the world is so different too. Like imagine having fans in an arena. Holy Mm -hmm. shit. Like that's right. I don't know when the world is going to get back to normality, but I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. I mean, we're in the, well, for me, I'm in the second day of 2021 at time of recording. And guess what people COVID is still fucking here and it's not going <laughs> away the anytime expiration soon. date didn't stop it what i thought I know, it was only a I was 2020 ex- thing i was expecting to like get it to like midnight 2020 and everyone's just like i don't have COVID anymore it's not a thing anymore let's just <laughs> go gone. and kiss random strangers or something i don't know but it's like lick it's so holes. weird like to see that yeah like you know what i mean just go and lick <laughs> I don't know. I was going to say something really weird then. Um, <laughs> it's, I don't know where my mind was going. But I don't know where that was going. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's just so weird to see that many people in an arena. Even when you watch like the 2020 Rumble, because it's Rumble season, I go back and watch all of the Rumbles. And I'm like, let's start with last year's because I've only watched them a couple of times. So I watched the women's and the men's. And to see that many people, I'm like, oh my God. Like, it's going to be so weird. The Rumble is my favorite pay-per-view, no matter what all year it's just always my favorite i love rumbles i think everybody every wrestling fan loves a royal rumble match i think it's just even if you don't watch wrestling for years you you always watch wrestlemania summerslam and the royal rumble survivor series maybe but it's always rumble mania summerslam rumble's just like there's nothing more exciting to me because they really do now that we got two as well which is even better we get we get Mm -hmm. all of them um and all the surprises and the nxt people it's just if i watch nothing of wrestling all year like i'd be happy just to watch the rumble and i'd be Even a shit rumble is still a rumble. But my point Mm -hmm. being is that I was going back and watching a heap of rumbles and just seeing all the people in the arena. I'm like, it's going to be so weird to watch this year's rumble because Thunderdome. 
I guess we're in the Thunderdome. I, I guess. I know there was like some kind of things come out being like, hey, they want to try and get people in there if they can. Um, but I don't think it's going to happen. Personally. Well, that's what always confused me because now they're in a baseball field. I thought they were moving locations to accommodate maybe some fans. Because yeah, with all like, that space you know, in there, you can has, socially distance. Yeah, like, you know, NXT has like the people behind the, the cages yeah. and then they have the screens. Like, why couldn't yeah. they do that? I get, But would it would it really... I guess my point is like, would that really transcend in a bigger arena? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, would that travel well? Like, would it just sound kind of corny and like, there's no one there? That's how I'm kind of thinking it. But well, we were in AT&T stadium and for WrestleMania where they revealed the the woman's title. Oh yeah. Um, Flex. Yeah. No worries. Oh yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's okay. It was my first one. Don't worry. My second one was the, the, you know, two years ago, but, uh, (laughs) but um, no. So when we were there, we're like, man, this place is loud. Like these people are like, you know, like wild animals. And then we watch it back and we're like, wow, you can't hear anything. Yeah. And yeah, those big arenas, the they don't pick up sound travel, as well as they Yeah, should. they just travel. It, the sound travels up because yeah. is that a is that got a roof on at that stadium? So that one has a roof that can open and close. When the show started, oh, okay. it was open. And then when night came, right. they closed it. But That's, even then, the yeah. AT&T Stadium is so big yep. that it just, when it travels out, it gets kind of lost. It's it's weird, but. It's, it is weird how you can have 100,000 people or however WWE said like a million and one or something like that. So they broke some kind of attendance record. But um, they, there's like 100,000 people in that stadium. And every wrestler says, and I've never really understood it until like later in life of being like, there's that many people and you can't hear a thing when you're in the ring. Like they're just, they're like, if people reacting to this, cause I don't really know. And I never really understood that. I'm like, how can you have that many people? Then when I was at super showdown and it was 80,000 people at the Melbourne cricket ground for, um, for that event. And I was being loud and then going home and watching that and being like, Oh, that didn't transcend onto television that well, because it's so yeah. big and that's an open, that's an open field. So like, it's, it's completely, there's no roof. Um, that makes it even harder because all the sound just goes up into the air. But um, I never really understood it until then to be into a stadium. That's the only, you know, obviously the only pay-per-view event I've ever been to because they don't come here very often because we don't give them enough money apparently. Um, But (laughs) I'd like to see wrestling come here a little bit. Well, we can't at the moment because we're in, everyone's dying. So we can't really Yeah, it may be a problem now. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's (laughs) a little thing in the way. Just bring them over here and leave them here for a little while. I'll give them all of my money. Um, A whole year of Australian shows. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, Sign me up. Well, sometimes I'm like, I wish, I wish, I wish wrestling was more of an international affair with some things because I feel like, and this isn't a knock on you guys, but I feel like you're so spoiled with it. You just kind of get it all the time. So you're just kind of like, you know, there's nothing worse to me than when you watch whatever wrestling and it's a dead crowd. It's yeah, like, uh, this just take you could be having the greatest match in the world and you just don't care because no one's reacting. You kind of feed off that energy, even when you're at home, yeah. you know, that you know what I mean. And it's kind of like, I wish they would, AW, WWE, whatever, would come to different countries more often and do television from, from more cities and stuff like that because yeah. they are global, they are global companies. Both of the two mainstream ones are blo- yeah. glo- global companies. So, I wish it was more, and it's just a better kind of atmosphere. Even on television, it's like, oh, when Raw goes to England or whatever, it's like, ah, oh, yeah, okay, we're gonna get a good Raw because the crowd's kind of alive for it. But um, yeah, well, but- even like if you look at the shows in Hartford, Connecticut, where you know where I'm located, um, the crowd there, because even though WWE is based in Connecticut. Yeah. We only get like one show a year and that's yeah. it. You know what I mean? So it's like that one show we got at the end of the year, that was all we had. And yeah. I remember one time we got two and we were like, whoa. Like whoa. We, when it popped up on the screen saying, we'll see you in a couple months, people went nuts. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but there when you're there. Cities, where, there is certain cities that even I know, like that's going to be a good show because this mm-hmm. crowd is always lively. Chicago. And then, you know, Chicago, you always get it. Philly, you always get it. Like anything in New York, you usually get, it's usually yeah. pretty good. Um, but then, you know, there's certain towns in America where I know that's not going to like, for some reason, Memphis is always a terrible crowd and I don't it's know the worst. why. And that's like Memphis. a wrestling, that's yeah. like a wrestling city. You know what I mean? It's yeah. so weird. Memphis is always know. so quiet. And I'm like, no offense to anyone listening in Memphis, but no, no, we uh, love you. <laughs> but we love um, <laughs> but, but just, just stop sitting on your hands. I know when I went, I know you're probably <laughs> the same when you go to wrestling as well. I'm like fucking going, like I'm sweating. Oh like, yeah. Going crazy. Dude, I'm like, at the shows. I'm being in a, a fat American. I'm eating my my mac and cheese. <laughs> I have my beer in the hand. <laughs> I'm enjoying life. Yeah, like I I make it a thing, especially when we don't get it that often anyway. So it's like, 
I'm going to fucking do this and I'm going to go hard and stuff like that. Um, and just be around all these people and stuff. And that sounds weird to say a year into yeah. this pandemic, it's like, I don't know if I could be around that many people. Um, Honestly, it's, kind of, it's scary, isn't it? How has the yeah. pandemic been going for you? Have you been coping with it? Well, I don't know. Everyone takes it so differently. Well, well, when it started, I was working retail. So I was always dealing with people. And um, the place I was at was considered essential. So we were open 20, not 24 seven, but like every day we were open. Yep. And of course it was at the time it was home improvement. Home, uh, I can't talk a home improvement store. <laughs> um, so everybody was like, oh, we're just sitting at home. Let's build a fireplace. So they're yep. just like going to my store. I'm like, isn't the point of this to stay home? And, <laughs> uh, but right now it's, it's gotten better since they opened things up. We had the big toilet paper craze and the, oh, yeah. uh, all that stuff. But um, yeah, now it's kind of calmed down. Now people just aren't wearing masks. So that's, that's mostly the thing now. Yeah. But yeah, it's so crazy to even think about a year ago, I was, you know, huddled around thousands of people in an arena. Yeah. And now I'm just <laughs> secluded in my house 90% of the yeah. time. And now we can't log onto the Thunderdome because they never let us on. So <laughs> they I sent me an invite. You- they really well don't go on it because you'll sit there for fucking ages and then they'll just be like sorry you're out and i'll be like i didn't even get in so i've never tried <laughs> i'll have you there in spirit i'll order I'm a josh so robinson mad. shirt yeah and then i'll wear it and just put it to cover the screen the whole time yeah just do that just put me over um <laughs> put a big super kick logo yeah. <laughs> it's um, <laughs> I like, that. Uh, like subtle plug yeah right uh, there i see it uh. <laughs> um, it's um it's it is crazy though to think we're in that kind of mentality of just like when things open up i'm gonna be kind of frightened because it's just kind of yeah. like i don't no, no. know what's going on and all of that kind of stuff but well, i'm in line know- to get a to get a vaccine because of oh, the really? place i'm working at now yeah they're like by certain type of jobs um are required to get them and oh daddy justine and i with both of our jobs we have the same job so we have to get a, a shot soon so let's see what happens even, <laughs> the rollout hasn't even started in australia yet um yeah, you guys are fine yeah, we're, we're doing like, well, <laughs> we're flaring up again in some parts. Again? Oh, my God. Yeah, overseas travelers got out of hotel quarantine and then Ugh. it started. So it's like, uh-oh. Um, we got that new to... batch strand in America now. The oh, one from like the UK. Yeah, yeah. We, have that in, we have that in a part of Australia up north. So um, that's fun. It, yeah. It, every it's time you now. think this thing is like going away, it's like, fucking psych. i'm back <laughs> i'm back and i'm fucking worse than before and you're like oh <laughs> it's like the eric bischoff geez. song yeah <laughs> <I'm back. laughs> um i i um moving away from pandemic life let's talk yes. about cfg for a minute because um Ooh. obviously i love you guys but uh you. when when did it all how how did it all, i don't know the origin story of of this so for anyone that doesn't know how did this all come about was it just simply something as simple as I just want to play games with my friends or was it, it something that you're like, I want to be this. It was a cool night, August. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so in high school, um, I met Austin, <clears throat> Austin. Um, and we were big, big fans of new legacy in high school. Still are big fans of them. Um, and I think, I think like everybody in the wrestling community, you know, at yeah. one point it's like, yeah, yeah, new legacy. But yeah, we were huge fans in high school watching videos, you know, during lunch with Jonathan and um, me and Jonathan had a little falling out after high school. And literally my only friends at the time were uh, Austin and Nate, who's my cousin and God brother. Yeah. Um, we were just like, Hey, let's just play games. So we decided to play extreme warfare revenge. If people don't know what oh. that is, it's a oh. text-based oh. wrestling manager. If you guys play like a soccer manager, it's that. But definitely not a game you play and you're like, you know, oh man, I'm going to become the EWR guy. You know what I mean? Like, this that is going to be the by game. By the way, the hours I put into that game, holy so shit. <laughs> like, I would just sit there on that beat up little old laptop I remember having. And it was just like hours and hours of this thing. And it would always come up as not responding when you go into like the, the internet, like dirt <laughs> yeah. sheets bit. And it would just like freeze yeah. and you're like, no, 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 no. And then it would eventually... Oh, that thing. I just, oh my God. I have spent hours, but go on. So no, yeah, we played that uh, every Friday night and the chat consisted of me on my cell phone and that was it. And we would just play the game, do some dumb stuff. And it's kind of like, while that is like the beginning of CFG, it was at a time where, you know, you had to be like the cool edgy guys, you know what I mean? And, you know, like yep. 
just do stupid stuff and it's stuff that we would never ever do again but it was like yep. to like oh maybe this will get a reaction you know what i mean yep and it's so it's kind of like when people ask about it i kind of like don't even like let people know about it you know what i mean because <laughs> it's like i hate it but it's made for some good moments that you know that still are like memes for us now yep but uh, a lot of it we just like shy away from because we just don't like it you know what i mean it wasn't it wasn't what cfg is now and like mm -hmm. you know we we just totally basically ignored that but it is where we started so yep um but yeah from there we moved on to like you know like a universe mode and then we had like one person in the chat and the first ever person was matt smooth Ooh. and uh he, who is our now our mod but he lives in connecticut yeah. also so we kind of worked out but yeah cfg was never made to just be like hey we're gonna be popular streamers or anything we're yeah. like let's just play whatever and just see what happens and meet some cool people you know so and it's yeah, kind of spiraled into this thing now <laughs> yeah like i i um i remember it wasn't the first time i seen you guys i know it wasn't the first but it was like one of the first streams that i was just like these guys who are these guys and i just kind of clicked on and I was just like, okay, like, I'm like, these guys are vibing and they're just like, I like streamers that um, kind of not, I don't want to say ignore what like chat, like they interact with their chat and stuff like that, but they're just kind of playing a game they would normally do if they weren't streaming and they just happen mm -hmm. to be streaming. That's always how the mentality that I've had with streaming and that's what I like in other people. So that's, mm -hmm. I think, just why I kind of just vibe and I'm like, I'll just chill here for a little while while I'm doing something else. And then obviously, like we said at the start, it just kind of spiraled. Um, out well, of like that. that's, but I think that chat interaction comes from the days of me just sitting on my phone waiting for someone to come in. You know what I mean? Oh, I know that. Hoping feeling. someone says hello <laughs> and you're like, oh my yeah. God. Who you are know? You? <laughs> but so, like, when I see like even like two people in the chat or like now, like we'll start streaming and I'm just still setting things up. And I see mm -hmm. stuff and I'm like, oh my God, I feel so bad because like, yep. you know, I know that people are taking their time, you know, and you know this too, like they've taken their time to watch us, which yeah. is such a crazy thing. And, and it's so flattering and it's just like, yeah, why are you spending any time watching me? I'm such an idiot. Like I'm just exactly. you could be like, sleeping right now. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you doing? Like, why are you, why are you watching me? But it is like that. And then like, it's like, it's just. I live for that kind of react, like that kind of interaction on Twitch. And it's so, you know how hard it is. There's been so many streams where it's just been like one person, the entire stream. And you're like, mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so unmotivated to do this, but you just got to kind of keep going. But I, through anything, if I was to stop streaming tomorrow and not do any of this anymore, it's like, I've built so many relationships with so many people through Twitch and through podcasting that I'm like, okay this has been pretty yeah. good for me but that's probably the thing i'll take away you know when i'm all like done with twitch and everything like that um when you I hang up the boots thing, yeah hang up you know retire <laughs> and and be like i'm done with this i'm too good for this now um it's, it's gonna be <laughs> like that's the thing i'll take away is like i've made friendships with people that are literally across the world so mm -hmm. and i'm just kind of i like being that kind of like like you guys are always like i'm sorry if i ask too many questions about australia it's like for one you can never ask me to do too many questions because I like the sound of my own voice. And two, it's very much- You like the sound like, of your voice too? I'm like, I'm like the alien that's like down here, like, bleh, like and I'm just kind of like, <laughs> I, I kind of like being the kind of like, I don't know, different one, I guess. It's like, I, my gimmick is gay Australian. And I'm just kind of like, here, like, ah, penis, Australia, you know? <laughs> Like that's just me down here. So I'm just kind of like living, but I don't know. It's so weird because I've, I've had, obviously there's been different people and you're not going to click with absolutely everybody you speak to. Like there's been many podcast conversations that I've had and I'm like, that's going to be the only time I talk to that person. Cause I can just tell that we're not gelling. And, yeah. and it, it's not because they're not nice or something like that. It's just sometimes not everybody's meant to, you know, be best friends. It's just not how the world mm -hmm. works. But even like the first time that we were all together, it was that just bring it stream yes, and that's being clipped <laughs> on oh my God. twitter <laughs> i'm like holy shit for one that was only a few months ago I, it feels like way way longer ago um but it's like within five minutes it was like we've been talking for 10 years i just don't understand it's so weird to me that sometimes you just you just deal with people i knew as soon as i got off that call after we streamed i'm like well that's not going to be the last time i do that like that's <laughs> I, mean, I think i'm just going to be kind of kind of you know here kind of all the time now it's just it's pretty cool um i forgot who so said it i was talking with i don't know if you know young boy on youtube yeah. young boy so uh when i did a first youtube video with him he said that too he was like he was scared and i was too because i was like oh man what if like we don't get along or anything and mm -hmm. we ended up we did a, a a 45 minute video but we're on a call for three hours almost or like yeah. two hours just you know talking and hanging out and um it's it's crazy how similar 
you know, the people I've met on, I think I, we're lucky that we're meeting people like you and uh, Aaron, also known as AFI, yeah. and, you know, Polygon and, you know, Alex, who's a young boy, like everybody's been so cool and, yeah. you know, so relatable and just, we're all just, we're all just friends, you know, it's cool. Yeah, we're it's, all the same people. We're all just wrestling fans who like yeah. to play games and make friends. We just happen to live on the op- opposite side of the world to each other. Yes. But it's like, it, 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 it's so great. You say like how we've, we've even had calls where it's like, we've ended the stream and then we're talking for like an hour. The amount of time that, that I'll never forget that call with you, Justine, me. Um, I think Sanide was there and we'll just listen to Justine with that accent <laughs> that she does. <laughs> Justine is oh. Justine is like hiding over there, like on the <laughs> she's right actually now. laughing right now because I heard her laugh, mate. and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it was like Would we you were like talking for like on the bar, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, yeah. for anyone that can pick up that, that's Justine's accent for the entire world. She yes, she's trying to talk Japanese, and that's her accent. <laughs> she like, did your <laughs> accent today when we went to Outback. <laughs> By the way, Dude, I want to talk to you about that because I have an issue with that. <laughs> because it, I didn't even think it's anything. Ash- what food do you actually get there? Because I don't know steak. if it's actually Australian. Steak, Brian? shrimp, mac and cheese. <laughs> Is any of that Australian? Burgers. Do they serve kangaroo? No. We it's kangaroo their, it used to be their logo. <laughs> we eat kangaroo here. I've, I've had do? kangaroo. Is it good? It's, uh, it makes you really gassy. I'm not kidding. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, like you have kangaroo and it's like, don't come near well, me. Well, I don't know don't if I should have been offended because they were like, hey, like wait in your car and we'll text you when to come in. And yeah. they sent me a text and it says, thanks for waiting, mate. Your table is now available. And I'm like, should I be offended? Should they have called me the other word that makes people that friends in Australia? Racist? I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> like, it's whoa. like mocking my language. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, I've, I've heard many people talk about Outback. Is it just called Out? What is it called? Outback Steakhouse? Outback Steakhouse. Steakhouse. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, that doesn't even sound that Australian. I thought steak was a thing that was fucking everywhere. I didn't even really eat steak. I'm not a big I steak thought steak guy. was an American thing. I'm not going to lie. I don't know. I. But, but what makes it Australian is there's just Australian flags everywhere. The guy says it in an accent. <laughs> Does he talk like Justine? In the oh commercials. She should go there and talk like that. Be like, I'm from Australia. <laughs> Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, but no, <laughs> but yeah, no, they have like Australian flags everywhere, and that's like as Australian as it gets. Awesome, yeah. I'm gonna, when, if, if you when go, I eventually come there, if you only oh. go to Outback, you think Australia is just full of desert and steak. That's it. <laughs> it's it kind of full of Aussie desert. Hospitality. I don't know, they have what Aussie hospitality, whatever that means. Do they say the C word? I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Say, uh, uh, okay, what, I would whatever. Say one thing. I will say one thing. It is kind of, there is a lot of just open land in Australia. Like it, there's mm-hmm. a lot of space between each town. So there is a lot of Ireland's outback. Like that. Yeah. It's like town and then it's just nothing. And then it's another town and then it's nothing. Um, mm-hmm. Especially in the part of Australia I'm in. We are the least populated town wise for the size of our state in Australia. Oh, like Jesus. there's, yeah. So there's a lot of like, if you're going somewhere, it's like an hour and a half of nothing. And then it's a town. So yeah. like- um that that part i get but steak i i don't know there's lots of meth in adelaide which i I say a lot because (laughs) they put meth in our steak yeah it's just if you go to the adelaide portion of of outback steakhouse you'll get it (laughs) which is pretty fun you know um i can hook you up get you get your money's worth it's like we've just been we've just been around it since i was like six years old it's like oh that's just the lady that's on meth it's like okay cool no worries um (laughs) we love her (laughs) We, where she's nice. Don't worry about it. Just don't go uh, around her too often because, you know, just don't hug her. It's like you worry about COVID, where it worry about meth. It's like, ah, <laughs> <Ooh. just a> <laughs> <mess>. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it, it, it's um, what I was kind of getting at before is that we can be kind of on opposite sides of the world and still be so friendly with one another. And it doesn't really feel, I don't find it odd i don't know some people yeah. are probably like how could you be friends with someone that's all the way it's like i don't know just them it just it's happens just, it's just usually that it's like when they're sleeping i'm usually having my dinner like it's usually like tea and yeah. i'm like i'm gonna eat my food and there's a sleep because it's time zones. <laughs> well it's weird because it's like something is weird as fuck to me time zones <laughs> well no it's weird like 80 percent of my friends are online friends yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean like I think the only, like the only friends that i really like communicate with 
in like my town are like the CFG guys. Yeah. Like maybe like one or two others, but like that's about it. Why? You know? Why talk to people in real life when you can just talk to them from the comfort of your own exactly. Home? That's how like when people I are like, oh my God, quarantine. I was like, I've been quarantining since 2015. <laughs> yeah, like I'm good. I'm going to rewatch some The Office and I'm going to rewatch Parks and Rec and I'm going to watch a lot of wrestling and play a lot of video games. This is no different I've been, to what I normally Because do. of quarantine, I've been watching New Generation WWF because I was oh, not right. born when that happened. Okay, so. all right. I think old wrestling stinks. I think it's very stinky. <laughs> I'm not into anything like pre-96, apart well, from like the obvious stuff that's like Well, good. that's why... That's why you should watch New Gen because it's so wacky and weird and it's so off the wall. It's the best thing ever. They had a guy that dressed like an animal. They had a monk. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, okay. So what is considered New Gen? What time span is that? Is that like 93 to like 96? 90, yeah, about 93 to the, I think the exact date where they say like it ends, I believe is the Sean Brett 60 minute Ironman match. That's like the last bit of- right um new gen because then it starts wrestlemania 11 12 god i don't even remember 90 i don't even know because then soon after that austin wins you know king of the ring yeah yeah yeah. promo and then it's just you know um but yeah so anytime from when hogan left uh to attitude era that's That's new gen that's Um, you have like the wacky things (laughs) yeah it's like so, so you were always, are you always a, a through and through WWF over WCW person? Or well, I know you were kind of watching at the time WCW like me, but even as you've gotten older, I'm sure you appreciate Nitro, but are you yes. always someone that's like, okay, that would be my, I even was, if I was watching at that time, I'd be watching Raw. Uh, at that time, I probably would have been watching WCW because growing up, I watched TNA a lot more than WWE growing up. Uh, TNA. Let's so, talk about that in a minute. But um, yeah, once I, I discovered that, my life changed. <laughs> I appreciate like what everyone considers the shitty Nitro because it's so fucking stupid to me, and I it's love the best. It. Like '99 to like when it ended in 2001 is my favorite. Like Scott Steiner came out with the tiger. Exactly, and I'm just no like, reason this is so crazy, and I don't understand any of it, and that's why I like it so much. Like there's some pay per view <laughs> three count. Oh my god, three count. Ah, sign me up. Um, there's a pay per view, <laughs> New Blood Rising. I think it's 99 or 2000. Yes. And uh, Miss Hancock, Stacey Keebler, for anyone that mm-hmm. doesn't know who Miss Hancock is, what a name. Um, is pregnant. Um, in that in that show, um, she gets wait what? And she has contractions and has to go to the hospital. And they never talk. I'm gonna about have to watch that pay per view again. It's so weird. New Blood what? Rising. I think it's 2000. It could be 99. It's one of them. And there's all of Is that the one where Sting got set on fire by Vampiro? That's the pay-per-view with the Judy Bagwell on a forklift match. Oh, yeah. That whole pay-per-view is fucking stupid. It's so good. Yeah, but Miss Hancock is in a, you know, like a a splash pool of some kind. Uh And then she starts holding her stomach. And I I believe she honestly could have had a miscarriage in that moment. Because, oh my God. Yeah. I I wonder if she like knew she was pregnant. I don't know. Let me call her up and find out. <laughs> I just it's, casually um, have her on speed dial. <laughs> it's WCW in those years was fucking wild. And I, I just weird. love it. I seen a clip on Twitter. I don't know if you've seen if I shared it or not. Um, it would have been this morning for you of uh, Tara Victoria. Yes, um, I was watching it. Singing. Well, in, in the well, not singing. I wouldn't say she was singing. She was like lip syncing her, her theme. theme. But. <laughs> Like she wasn't even getting the words right. I will, I will just, and she was dancing with the young bucks. And I was like, I forgot this existed. And I was Me like, too. I want to watch all of this all the time because <laughs> TNA has moments like that in those years. That's like, I don't know why this is happening. It's just, that happening. was during the Hogan years. Oh yeah. Like 2008 yeah. to like 2014 is what I want to watch. And it's not on impact plus none of those. Oh, I know. Are on there. And it, that's I what we're hoping with our reason? podcast. That's what we're hoping with our podcast that it, it, they eventually put them up because if they yeah. don't we won't be able to do the show <laughs> like what is there any reason why they're not on there is like someone else own them or something like that maybe that they don't have the rights to anymore uh, i'm guessing it's like wwe where they're just like putting stuff up in like big batches because for a while they didn't have a lot from 07 and then they put uh, up all of 07 so you know like right. wwe is just slowly putting up like heats and velocities oh, i think yeah. that's what they're doing and not just doing it all at once so they have huh. you know content to put out that's my guess, yeah, but I guess they're the years that I want to watch it because that was the years that I was like prime into TNA it was like Same. late 2007 until pretty much until like end of 2013, 2014. You know when it started to change a little bit and it kind of went a bit 
like when it was on know, spike it, and yeah it like went yeah. a little weird and then like i just kind of i don't believe i think it may have went off australian tv at around those years and i was just like i can't be bothered watching this any i'm not gonna seek this out unless it's on so i just stopped watching and i pop into impact every now and again but um but those years is like I just remember watching things like Sting, obviously, is a, is one that kind of pops out. Jeff Hardy, I remember watching a lot. Um, Christian would have been there for a little while when before he went back to WWE. Um, the Beautiful People and like a, yes. a knockoff Sarah Palin, if you, yes. <laughs> you remember yes. the playing. <laughs> yes. I remember these casino games that they would play. It was like strip poker or something <laughs> like that. I remember <laughs> this knockoff Sarah Palin being there and I'm like, what the hell? Because do you remember this weird time in Impact where there wasn't a lot of wrestling? It was a lot of like vignettes and, and like, like weird segments. Yeah, weird segments like through the door. Like the camera would be through the yeah, door. Yeah, it would always be shaking and he'll zoom yeah. in and like zoom yeah. out. Like, what are you doing? Just stand like, still. Yeah. And it was like, I just remember all of these these vignettes and segments in that time. Like, um, but yeah, that they that still Tara use that video, camera. Do they? They still do that. Yeah, sometimes not all the time. Not as much Man. as they used to, but oh they God. do the zoom in still, and it's like, oh my God. And like factions were everywhere, like main event mafia and fortune. Fortune four. And, yeah, and like um aces and eights. Remember when that was a thing with Brooke Hogan? Oh my Holy god. Shit. The Dude. Brooke Hogan wedding with um with um Bully Ray <laughs> is like, oh my god, it's so good. Is it fucking hot in here? And then Taz takes off the jacket and he's in aces. <laughs> everybody was in aces and eights. I was like, they had commentators, they had referees, they had everybody. It was Wes like the Briscoe NWO was in it. I was like, what the hell is this going? And I'm like, it's just, and they were fighting Brooke Hogan and they like kidnapped her or something. I'm like, this is the craziest shit I've ever seen. I love it. I love it all. Who was also, oh, a Miss Tessmacher was with them too. Oh, yeah. Who was, then, uh, oh, what was her name in WWE? I forgot. Um, she was, with, she was with Kelly Kelly's expose, like that. Yeah, trio with, with Layla. Layla. Um, I forgot. She was only there was for like a, it, was it, a week. Was it, it wasn't Brooke, was it? Was it? Brooke Tessmacher? Oh, yeah, maybe it was, was Brooke she just Brooke? Was she just Brooke? I think she was just WWE? Brooke. Yeah. And they just danced and took off all their clothes in ECW. Yeah, and then on TNA, right like, the camera guy just, just for some reason, right didn't, he ass. didn't want to didn't want to film above her waist for some reason every just, time. Just went right up there. I was like, oh, okay. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I remember the knockouts was something that obviously would appeal to me because I've always loved women. And I that love was the knockouts. They don't get enough credit for really starting no. everything in a mainstream capacity. They were doing things that Certainly WWE weren't doing in They had the tournaments, tag division. Mm -hmm. They had probably, like, their top stars were, you know, like, Awesome Kong, Gail Kim, you know, um, who else? I can't even. Uh, Taylor they're, they're Wild. Do you remember Taylor Wild? She was uh, so She posted good. a picture in a ring again, like, yesterday. Oh, really? Don't know what's coming of that, but she posted Damn. a picture in a ring saying it's good to be home, so. Oh, oh hell yeah. I she love was Taylor Wild. She was great. She was so good. Ahead of her uh, time. But they had... They had, yes, yeah, so ahead of their time, but they had lots. And then, like, when Tara came in, Victoria and Mickey James, and they had a really solid Karen Terrell, who's someone I did not know that could work at the rate that she could work. Oh, my and I was God. Like, Especially towards damn. the end of her time there. Mm -hmm. Holy crap. That her and Gail Kim. outstanding was so, so good. And that ladder yeah. match they had, too, was really good as well. They had a, a bunch of great matches. But there was a lot of women there that were just, like, doing stuff that it's like, oh, this is what women could actually be doing, but they're over mm -hmm. here having minute, two-minute matches, and it was like, okay, they have no chance over here yet, and then yeah. obviously happened what happened. But that was something that kept me invested in TNA for all those years. It's like their knockouts division is like, there's no comparison. It was just so great. But TNA was well, just something yeah. that was just so fun. What did it for me was the X division because, yeah, as you see, too. I'm a skinny man, you know what I mean? <laughs> so like all the smaller guys were all in TNA. They weren't even the cruiserweight division in WWE was people like Rey Mysterio, who at the time was jacked. You know what I mean? They're all muscle yeah. guys. And like, you know, Shannon Moore, even Shannon Moore had muscles. You know what I mean? So like there was yeah. no one really that was a smaller guy. But when you go to TNA, you have guys like AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, that mm -hmm. you just put them in the street. They look like normal dudes, but mm -hmm. they're putting on some of the most amazing matches you will ever see in your life. So good. Activision and, was so, so good. Like they, oh, they constantly were just like, if there was a, a pay-per-view or a show with an X division title match or something in the X division, you're like, okay, so that's going to be the best match on the card. And then mm -hmm. we'll just kind of see what else is good on this card as well. But that was kind of a driving point, probably similar to how you're speaking about it. It's just like, this is going to be really good. Yeah. Well, they would start off every pay-per-view with like a crazy, like eight man X division match. And it'd be like yeah. the best match of the night. Yeah. So yeah. They always had multi-man oh, yeah. matches. I remember them, like, all, all, obviously Ultimate X and stuff like that. But they always had, like, some kind of multi-man match, and it was just, like, like just the wildest shit. Like, the wildest yeah. shit. It was just so much fun. Um, 
Well, we'll keep talking about wrestling because I like wrestling with, yeah. um, you know, spiraling off of TNA and going into what you kind of liked in the last couple of years. I know you're not like a big WWE guy anymore. AEW's come along and it's kind of taken that kind of core watch your time. And I'm sure you still watch pay-per-views when you can and you still watch um, NXT, you said you watch sometimes, mm-hmm. but I'm sure you still watch takeovers and stuff like that. But even AEW yes. as well. Um, what keeps you invested in wrestling now? Is there something different to when you were younger or is it, does it make you feel like a kid? Is it, or just something you can't really explain? It's those long-term stories. And if the show is not giving me a long-term story, then I just can't get invested. I think that's why I'm not yeah. watching raw as much, you know, I'll catch SmackDown when I can, cause they're, they're starting to get back into that, you know, with Roman yep. Reigns and all that. Yep. But like AW, I think that's why I watch AW the most because like their long-term stories have been building since, you know, their first episode and are still going to yep. this day, you know, that keep me invested. Um, you know, it's not always just the matches that keep me watching. It's the story. And mm-hmm. I think that's what it was. That's what it was with NXT when it first started. And I think when, you know, the whole pandemic happened, NXT, you know, they had to pivot a lot. They're having injuries yep. and yep. all this stuff. So it kind of pushed me not away, but I wasn't watching it as much because mm-hmm. it seemed like their stuff was just becoming like hot shot stuff for a little bit. Yep. And I was like, it's not what NXT was. I wanted, you know, that long-term story. Um, but of course, as a kid, it was all about the, you know, the cool you know, wrestling matches and you yeah. know, the X division spot, they're doing flips. But nowadays it's more just, I want to see like a story I can be invested in that. Like, how do I explain it? Give me a reason to watch your show yeah. outside of just matches. You know what I mean? Do yeah. something that will keep me watching months down the line. And that's what I, I feel like AEW has done. Cause I know AEW, they, they do not have anywhere nearly as good as a women's division as WWE or NXT, which is weird to say nowadays than WWE, but um but it's their stories that they're doing that are really keeping me invested, you know? Yeah. But yeah, no, I understand that. That's probably the only reason I'm not, I can't get into it is like, I can watch something better over here when it comes to the women's division. So I'm like, I, yeah. it's just hard for me to get, once they get that there, I'm pretty much all in. Like I catch dynamite when Unintended. I can, everyone knows. Uh, <laughs> I, I, um, I'm, I, I've never been one to be like, I'm the biggest AEW fan. I'm not, I'm yeah. not going to pretend like I am, but like, just give me reasons to at least get me over there so I can watch everything else and enjoy it and, and give me something to hook my, like sink my teeth into. But um, you are right about long-term stories. WWE has never been, well, at least in the recent memory has never been great outside of Sasha and Bailey. There really hasn't been that many long-term stories. I mean, that's yeah. a very, like, that's the obvious choice. And that's like the longest term story they've done in a long time. When you think, and about I feel like sometimes long-term their long-term stories are by accident. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, you know Sasha what I mean? Bailey like was an accident. I don't think that yeah. was meant to go as long as it did. And it just mm-hmm. happened that way. I think the pandemic pushed it back a lot um, because I think originally that was probably going to happen at Mania, to be completely fair. I think Sasha Bailey would have happened at Mania last year. Or, yeah, last year. But it just never really did because there was no fans. When you think about how crazy is that, that, you know, 10 months ago was WrestleMania and we had no fans. Yeah. Insane. We had a WrestleMania I watched with no both fans. those nights. And so it was... How do you weird, feel about man. wrestling with no no fans? How do you? How do you uh, I like the Thunderdome a lot better. Yeah, well, me too. I think that's also what pushed me away too was no fans because I don't hard. know. Yeah, I think that's what because that's what pushed us to do our, I think our podcast, our TNA one, because we wanted to watch wrestling with fans at the time because we'd start doing it in March, you know, and that's yeah. when you know fans it's were not a fans. thing. So, um, a, yeah, wrestling it makes no wrestling is rough. It's it's rough. Um, I went back and watched Mania, like maybe a month ago um just a few of the different matches from there and i was like oh this is so fucking weird to watch mm-hmm. this with no people reacting and you just i don't know it's like i i personally can't get into a match with no fans because i'm like there's not there's some of my favorite things about wrestling is like hearing the reactions of a crowd it's like mm-hmm. that ooh, that ah that like they're kind of hanging on every move and it's like you can't obviously get that when there's no one in the arena yeah. you just kind of see cameramen and then you just hear weird grunts and it's like this is so <laughs> odd but it is kind of like a mania we'll never forget isn't it yeah it definitely was unique and i think that's another thing that's really pushing me you know as like a hard aw guy is they do have fans now you know they what do. i mean they found yeah. a way to make it work they mm-hmm. the fans are outside yep. while where the ring is is inside they're social yep. distance so but like even if you watch you know the brody episode from this week oh yeah oh my god it was cool. basically it felt like a show from before the pandemic, even though they were socially yep. distanced, the yep. crowd, they had a, probably the biggest crowd they've had and they did it in a safe way. So I feel like if it can be done uh, well, then I could probably come back to it, you know, where I was before, but um, yeah. 
yeah, it's definitely it's so weird without fans. It's so weird. Um, you, that Brody episode, by the way, this is gonna you know we're recording this a little bit of ahead of a t- ahead of time, but I watched that episode. Um, holy shit, it was hard Man. to not get so emotional in that time. Um, wrestling deaths are always like they always kind of affect everybody differently, but they always kind of hit me because you watch these people for so long. But I haven't felt a death like that in a very long time. I think it was just because he was so young and it was so unexpected. Mm-hmm. It was like last week I was just kind of like, I was with, I, I remember I was messaging you just before they put out that, that thing, AEW put out that thing. Um, and you guys were going to stream, weren't you? Or something like we, that. You guys we were, were yeah. literally setting up a stream yeah. and snide just goes, Whoa. And we're like, what? And then he gets, it gets quiet and he goes, dude, this can't, what? And he just like was like mumbling. We can't hear him like, what is it? And he's like, dude, Brody Lee died. And we're like, whoa. And then like Jonathan was setting yeah. up the stream on his computer to do Parsec. His computer closed out. I went on Twitter immediately. And yeah, there was yeah. the picture right there. It was so weird. And we were on a call. I think we were on the call for another like 30 minutes. And we were just like, we just can't stream. It was 30 of a 30 minute call. 20 minutes was silence. Cause we just didn't know what to say to each other. And yeah. it consisted of what? No, this can't be real. It was just like that yeah. being repeated a ton and i think the last time that happened really was the hannah kimura death uh, yeah. this past summer yeah that was another one that, was, that one that and was... shed Those yeah because the they were so unexpected biggest. like i'm not this isn't taking away from any other deaths but like usually it's an older person that you're like oh my god that's terrible but mm-hmm. they're older so it's almost kind of like you're wired in your brain to go okay they've it's lived expected. their life like they've they've had a great like howard finkel and everything like that that was sad and but like they've lived their life. Like someone like yeah. Brody was 41. I think yep. they said like Hannah that's was young. my age. Exactly. Like, so like it's sad. That, I was with a friend out for coffee and I looked on my phone and I just kind of went silent. And she was like, she doesn't watch wrestling. And I was like, I need to go home. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like yeah. I can't, I can't, I need to like, it's weird how you react to people that you don't know. Really. We don't know this person, but if anything we can take away from it and this isn't like at all just the celebration of his life and what a great human being he seemed to be he was very much a family man and just wrestling as a whole it just kind of was like it doesn't matter what you you, who you're fans of what company you're watching what company you work for everyone was just like no we're coming together on this common thing it was even cool to see um the the uh tribute show this past week and wwe talent openly just commenting on it and 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 stuff yep. like that and it was just kind of like that wrestling is i think sometimes wrestling fans can get so jaded and so like i am this company and i'm this company and i'm gonna bark at you if you don't like this but to see that. for the most part for the most part i'm not saying everybody for, for the majority of this community coming together and just being like let's just not it doesn't matter what we're watching mm-hmm. let's just kind of you know pay our respects and everything like that um it's it, that's a that's a not lack of a better term a good thing to see out of yeah. a very terrible situation but that tribute show was it was oh hard, man. man that was i can't remember a tribute show like that since eddie's yeah honestly eddie's was was i know the circumstances surrounding it but even i remember watching benoit's before that, all the details that was out. a great show before you know everything came out after but yeah. man that they went all out for that show i remember um, what i remember ben was yeah and i, was I like, remember oh, where man, i was man. with eddie like to this day, I remember where I was with Ed, with Eddie's that I was looking for campers with my parents because we were debating oh, wow. on getting a camper, and uh, it was on the radio they announced it. Whoa. That's how big it was. The radio announced that Eddie Guerrero passed away, and my dad was like, "You want to go home?" And I was like, "Yeah." And then on the car ride home, he was like, "It's okay if you want to cry." And then like I did because like, I'm like, I'm I cried. I cried I did. so much when Eddie I died. Did. I seen it of all things on WWE.com because that's how really? I. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. it was. I believe it was fairly it was nighttime my time because i believe it was it during the day for you guys I, it was I during think. the day yeah it was like nighttime for me yeah and it was it was nighttime or maybe it was when i was first waking up in the morning it was either that or when i was first waking up and you know before school you would go on the i'd go on the computer for a little while while i had my breakfast and i just remember wwe.com was like my main source of of wrestling you know at that age i was yeah and so like i went on there and i was like what the hell and i just remembered like bawling my eyes out and that's a wrestling death that i'll never forget i think brody's mm-hmm. will be like that too because i'll just mm-hmm. remember where i was and how like for the rest of the it was afternoon for me for the rest of the afternoon i just kind of sat around yeah and not be well, any I like remember 
this like just kind of not like openly like crying just like sitting here yeah. and being like oh man this is well, i remember the shad one was rough because at the time i was working for a wrestling news source called wrestling uh, wrestling news on instagram mm-hmm. still great friends with them but we were um they were very very close with shad and jtg like almost mm-hmm. they if it wasn't for them that you know account wouldn't exist yeah. so they were like hey uh we want you to do like a podcast for you know the channel and uh we'd love for you to have like shad and jtg on so like i was talking and like texting with shad about like days and all that and i would like thank him and he'd be like no it's no problem and like the fact that he was giving like me the time of day um was like amazing and then we started talking about um i did a breast cancer stream in october of that year and we were talking about having no one knows this but only me and the guys from wrestling news and the cfg guys we the plan was to have jtg and shad on um to come talk with the chat mm-hmm. that was what we were going to do because it was a big like collaboration thing yep. um but with scheduling it fell through and then it was only a couple months later um he passed yeah and yeah. then i'll never forget the hannah one we were in the middle of a stream where oh, the chat because chat the chat knew how much of a fan i was you know i mean yep. still i am huge fan of her yep. um and they were putting in the chat like did you guys check twitter blah, blah blah and you know i was like no 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 and i you know i didn't want to like bring a lot of attention to it and then, like, people started flooding our Discord with, like, hope she's okay, what's going on? And then, you know, the news came out at, like, midnight or something. Yeah. And I was like, what the hell is that going one was, on? That one was sad because she was so young. And the circumstances, mm-hmm. obviously, surrounding it is Terrible. just, like... And you know what? Even, like, I know that, like, things like that, they're so awful. And we wish that people would change. But it's, like, it's, it's like a few days of, like, people being, like, I'm never going to do this. Thing. And then people are just bitching and moaning and harassing one another online mm-hmm. and it's like i don't understand that shit like i'm not saying i'm a saint i do things wrong but i will proudly say that i'm a fairly nice person to people on twitter and i'm not going to interact with too many people that are just being jerks and just want yeah. to kind of you know antagonize someone it's just not worth it but i don't know what it is about online culture but that's the sucky part of of social media is just there's so many great stuff like we're able to be friends out of this and talk on a daily basis but then there's all the kind of shit that you have to go with even just people's opinions on wrestling they're spewing it as facts and it's like if you don't agree with that then like you're the devil that's i just i don't understand that mentality and i just i hate people that you know it's a real thing i've been through it and i'm not gonna you know i'm not gonna be crying me a river but i've had it experienced to me and it's not the nicest feeling for a complete yeah just stranger to attack you um but I don't understand that kind of culture and it's why I think I vibe. I choose my people that I vibe with and I go hard. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm a very supportive <laughs> person in that kind of aspect. And because we love it's like, that. Because it's just like, I lo- there's no better feeling selfishly than when someone's like, I like what you're doing. You're a nice person. Like it feels good. Like it strokes your ego. Everybody likes their ego stroked at some stage. It's we just, all love being stroked. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Um, I just did this <laughs> over here. Um, <laughs> did it Cut the feed. Cut it the feed. It like, looked worse. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to have to do it. And it's like, oh, no. Um, <laughs> have fun with that, everybody. Um, <laughs> this is not a PG rated uh, 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 podcast. This is a, a titled explicit content for a reason, but whatever. Um, it, it is just, it's just like, why not support the people that are nice and like are good people? I just, I yeah know. show it more i think well, there needs to be more of that I, in this I community think that's why like other. cfg is like what cfg really is is just like we just want people that feel like lonely or like like if mm-hmm. they're weird or if they think you know negatively about themselves we want to you know have that open space for them to just kind of hang out with us because yeah. we're all weird in our own way we're all you know oh, not yeah. normal and no one no one's normal you know if you're normal that's weird you know what i mean yeah, and that's like i'm not normal see, you're oh. not normal we're we're weird exactly. fucking people the conversations that we've had i'm like we're weirdos and i kind of <laughs> proudly, <laughs> proudly well, am why, a weirdo <laughs> and i feel like there's not enough people like that in like wrestling journalism nowadays like there's maybe like one or two people that they're are very, like genuinely yeah. nice people so like my i my dream was to always work for you know like a no dq or like another like journalism site and kind of be that for you know the wrestling community that we don't see a lot i always wanted to do that um but uh it's kind of translated and turned into cfg where we hope that we're that for someone so 
You are. I'm, I'm going to put you over for a minute, light. and I'll be I'll be all sappy oh, and, and disgusting, gross. and bleh, you can vomit. Bleh. Um, but <laughs> for me, you guys are like I think I've said this to maybe you, Gabe, um, but to me, I've never been a person throughout school that's really fit in with a crowd. I was always kind of that one that just like was just kind of like floating, and I never really felt like I fit in. And I don't think I've ever really had a group of friends that I've felt like I'm like, this is my spot and I have my spot and I just fit in with these people like, like you guys. So yeah. um, thank you for like, even just reaching out to me and stuff like that, because I've never felt more like included in something. Like I feel even for someone that stepped in way later than when you guys started, it's like, I feel mm -hmm. a part of this and it's like, it's cool. Like I just couldn't, I have always imagined I've watched new legacy Inc. for a long time. I've always imagined like imagine having a group of friends that you could just play although i can never really play anything because my internet is fucking ass because i live <laughs> in the in across the Mars. world but like it's just cool to just vibe and like we just talk for two or three hours like we we like i think we stream nearly every week at least once yep and we're yep. talking pretty much every day like it's not like we're not we're just like oh I'll see you on the next stream it's like no i'll probably snapchat you some fucking drunk shit that i'm doing the next day <laughs> i'm an idiot but like, it's not that like we're not talking to one another. It's like, it's so I guess to be sappy, thank you for including me because it's like, I feel at home in a sense. And it's like, cool. Well, it's the thing like, and, but it goes two ways though, because I think it was really when we met you where CFG really became like that thing now where it's uh, just like a group of people that are just so like loving and all that, because before that we were just like having fun, but now we're like, I feel like we're more supportive because yeah. of you and yeah. Like, we're so grateful to, to have you a part of CFG and, you know, just, you are just such an amazing person. I'm going to put you over. I know. Uh, ugh, I know. But right. <laughs> I'm kidding. Let me just. But no, like, genuinely. <laughs> <laughs> but genuinely, like, thank I, you. I fucking know. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like, dude, like, you've been, like, absolutely supportive. And I feel like we wouldn't have half the people watching us if it wasn't for you, like, retweeting every time and stuff. Oh, I always do. I that, hate that when I'm, like, working. I always put it, I go here now. <laughs> and I hate that when I'm like sleeping or like I'm working and you start streaming and I'm like, I can't retweet because I'm at work. You know what I mean? Or I wake up like shit, Josh streamed and I wasn't able to like help out. I always feel bad, but like, Mount, dude, like, oh man, I feel like we've met some really cool people through this and you know, yeah. you're you definitely know. top of the list. Don't tell yeah. Jesse, but you're top of the list. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to actually, I'm going to reach out to Jesse to come on this show because I feel now like you're good. Oh, okay. Nah, yeah. I'll be like, no, okay, told me not to. Um, <laughs> you know what? I'll, I'll even be, if I'm in this sappy mood. I'll even be nice. I even like Justine. Oh, <laughs> I don't. So it's okay. <laughs> Just, Justine, Justine, you are great. I give you shit, but like, you are great. You're great too. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you. Fuck. Fuck the fade. Cover. But all right. So I want to end. I want to end with something really kind of. It kind of segues off this because okay. I think you learn a little bit about yourself. So okay. I'm a big fan of Whitney Cummings. You know the comedian Whitney Cummings. Yes. Okay. She has a podcast. Uh, it's called Good for You. It's a great podcast. Um, and she does this thing. Uh, this personality test on this podcast. Um, and you just list off a few things and it's all BS, but it's fun. All right. So I'm going to do it with you because I feel like you're a pretty crazy person. So I'm going to. Oh boy. Like... All right. I'm ready. Okay. So I need to know your favorite animal and I'm not talking like your favorite pet, like an animal you admire, like just some animal that you like. I like oh, this animal. Flamingos. Flamingo. Okay. So you got a flamingo. I'm flamingos. writing this down. So, um, okay. okay. I need three adjectives to describe a flamingo. What's an adjective again? <laughs> Describing words. Describing, describing oh flamingo words. okay uh flamingo is uh pink is that a, is that, that's, is that, that an noun? adjective i don't know an adjective how about um stylish stylish okay stylish um yep. they're very um uh flamboyant flamboyant that's a word right yes because yep. you know uh and they are um <laughs> uh inspiring okay to me to me it's what it is to you okay so i need now your favorite article of clothing so something you go in your wardrobe and you put on and it's just like that's mine like i'm gonna put this on it's your go-to um oh boy um it would have to be like a a plaid shirt a plaid i love shirt. wearing plaid yeah especially during the fall 
Okay, so I need three adjectives to describe that. Um, comfortable. Yeah. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> um, <laughs> how do I describe a plaid shirt? Uh, when you put it on, what's kind of what? What is the feeling you get when you put that on? So you feel comfortable. I feel sexy. Sexy. That's one. Holy shit. <laughs> he puts he puts hesitantly. <laughs> um uh confident. Ooh. Okay, last yeah. thing. Okay, I need your favorite body of water, whether it's like a, a certain beach or a lake, a shower, just any kind of water that you just feel is yours. Uh bottled water. Okay, I need three adjectives to describe <laughs> this bottle of water. Holy shit. Uh, uh refreshing. Okay. Cold. Oh my god, and, okay. And moist. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, so this is this this is the personality quiz. So the first one, you put oh, stylish, boy. flamboyant, and inspiring. You are a flamingo. That's how you view yourself. You're stylish, a you're flamingo flamboyant, baby. you're inspiring. Okay, this article of clothing, which is a plaid shirt, is how other uh-huh. people view you. Comfortable, <laughs> sexy, and confident. <laughs> Oh, hell yeah. And this one may be my favorite. This bottled <laughs> water is how you view sex. Refreshing, cold, and moist. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, oh man. I, th- I think Cummings it's spot on. For that one. Um, oh. You can thank Whitney for that one. Um, <laughs> when you said the word moist, which is a word I fucking hate... That's was probably like, oh mostly the reason God. why I said it too, because I knew you oh, despise that word. Cold. <laughs> <laughs> you really? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh. Um, well, that was a perfect way to end that. I think there's really no other way to end that. That that is how you. That's just Gabe in a nutshell. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> this was this, see, I told you this would end in a train wreck of some kind. And it, yeah, <laughs> this was like it. a roller coaster. Like we were like happy and then we were laughing and then we were fucking sad and then we got sadder and then <laughs> we got happy and then moist. we just got moist. <laughs> 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 and that's how you wrap a bow on a podcast. That that really is. Um Gabe, thank you so much for coming on. This was honestly a lot of fun. Um, where can people find you on Twitter? Tell people about CFG. Put yourself over for the next minute or so. Uh, uh, so we're on Twitch.tv slash CFG streams. Um, we are on Twitter.com slash CFG streams on YouTube. If you just type us in, you'll find us. Um, maybe. Who knows? Um, yeah, those where subscriber else? numbers are going up. I know. We're almost at 500. Mm-hmm. Halfway to 1,000. Isn't that fucking weird? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 now, like, get out of it while you can. <laughs> I think the turning point for us was when we changed our name from Catch Finish Gaming and we shortened it to just CFG because people kept calling us Catfish. And I don't think they remembered us. So <laughs> they probably thought Sorry. we were Catfishes. But um, um, you can also find us uh, twitter.com slash ultimatexpod where we talk mm-hmm. about TNA, classic TNA. So that Dude, sure that. is interesting. And we totally upload weekly all the time. Yeah. every week they do <laughs> and if you ever get lost and can't find them just go to my twitter feed because every tweet i tweet is about them so yes and we love it i'm literally literally a billy k and cfg stan account and giddy because the, <laughs> and giddy yes yeah, can't giddy. forget giddy where is no, giddy right now um i don't know giddy hiding from me? somewhere i don't know she was locked in my bedroom <laughs> and she was so angry at me i i before we started recording Angrily i was like i'm ass. sorry i gotta i gotta get out of here because giddy's like going crazy because i locked her in my bedroom by accident so she's probably got the shit <laughs> she's probably like like done a shit on my carpet or something be like fuck you josh how do you like that you. yeah it's clean this up you bitch um but yeah that's my that's my twitter is giddy billy k and you guys so yes i don't know how you feel about that but um <laughs> we love it we're honored that's like the mount rushmore it's it's cfg billy k giddy and angie mysterio it's like oh, i forgot about angie i've got best thing ever she's never on tv anymore they took her off i TV. know how dare I they feel, i feel like they were intimidated they're like we can't take the shine off roman or sasha mm-hmm. or anyone like that yeah so that's why you stopped watching TV. did you she realize that they took a- her off mm, i don't watch smackdown as much anymore i mean smackdown's See? on right now and i couldn't I, I actually smackdown's quite good i should say that when i do watch smackdown it's actually very good um yes but 
But Angie but, might show up on Dynamite soon, maybe. Hmm? Who knows? Trying to take the belt. She's coming for the strap. She's coming for you, so, Kenny. Sorry, Sting, <laughs> but she's uh, taking your taking your shine, buddy. <laughs> what if it's she's Angie Mysterio a- painted as Sting? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's Angie. <laughs> <laughs> that would be... I would stop watching WWE. I'd go to AEW. <laughs> I'd be done. Here's the bat. <laughs> uh, I'd be... Oh, my God. Oh, man. God, the kendo <laughs> stick. should have the kendo stick. Like, when she beat up... I think it was Murphy oh. or something. Yeah, or yeah, or Seth, one of them. And then you got the little girl who's she's like dating <laughs> the little Murphy girl. She's dating Murphy. I love and that you, you call her the Ray. little girl. And then you got fucking six foot seven fucking Dominic running around. You're yeah, like, that, dude. How does that work? Yeah, I mean, Eddie Guerrero wasn't that tall. It, no. His dad wasn't that tall. <laughs> what a ladder match, by the way. The custody of Dominic Mysterio, classic. That's why I love wrestling. How stupid is that? When you tell someone it's like they had a match for the custody of. Ray's son, but it's actually Eddie's son, but it's actually Ray's son, but we're not really sure because he's like, it's just like the weirdest shit. And you can't 100% explain. I had an I'm your poppy shirt. Still have it. Don't know where it is, but I had an I'm your poppy shirt. <laughs> I've talked about the worst wrestling shirt I have and it's that Brie mode shirt. And I wear it with I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. It's the worst theme song in history. I was rudely woken up to that WrestleMania weekend by Jonathan and <sighs> Brie mode, what a, what a song. Like it's just terrible. It's iconic. It's iconic. I almost threw him out a window. Bre- Bre- Bree mode. And let's just all preface it something. Bree mode was originally about getting drunk. We're going to talk about that? <laughs> yeah, it was. As we didn't talk about Total Divas. Before we go away, we have oh, to yes. quickly talk about Total Divas because- We should do we a Total both- Divas podcast. <laughs> Honestly, we should do a, like a watch along thing. Like we just go back from episode one. <laughs> oh my now. God. Holy shit. That would be such a good idea. <laughs> oh my God. We, I've never met somebody in my entire life that was- as much into total divas as you i love total divas so like we would record it every week and then me and my brother would watch it <laughs> we were committed yeah. we loved brie and brian we loved uh, trinity and uh the other uso that's not jay so jimmy jimmy yeah <laughs> we, the one that yeah, oh really my god <laughs> yeah eve marie you know dyeing oh. her hair which she's not oh. supposed to good times stephanie stephanie taking her aside when or when um <laughs> was it natty who drunk dialed stephanie Yes. <laughs> yes. Natty on that show is amazing to me. Her like, role-playing episode still, is great. Uh, the, the brownie episode will, when she crashes her car <laughs> is like, I'm like, Natty, oh, man. I can never hate Natty because of that. She literally is like, I had a weed brownie. And then she's like, let me crash my car so I don't have to take this drug test. And it wasn't even a weed brownie. Paige was like, no. She was like, it wasn't. Natty Paige was became crazy. one of the best things on the show for a while. Yeah, when she first Paige came really on, good. she was mm-hmm. amazing on that show. Yep. Oh, that my whole, God. Good times. I haven't watched it in a couple of years. Like, admittedly, I didn't watch the last one with like Ronda. I think was on it. I didn't really. Yeah, care I missed for, that. I missed that whole season. I didn't really care for that. But maybe like at the beginning, it. yeah, maybe we'll just we'll just watch it on Discord together. We won't even record it. We'll just fucking <laughs> we'll just watch it. it. I'll be like, let's we'll watch Total Divas. What are they up to today? <laughs> Nia Jax is on there yelling at Carmella or some shit. I don't know. What they do. Um, I think Nia Jax. Uh, is on Alexis that show. Pet Pig. Good times. Oh, Larry Steve, is it or something? Yeah, like that? yeah, yeah. Oh my God, Total Divas, what a show, man! Great show. That was at the Underrated. Kardashians any day. Sorry, sorry, Kardashians. <laughs> Not eat your heart you. out. Yeah, you wish you were. You wish you were Natty, honestly. In the bananas, <laughs> all of that kind of shit. Well, that's that. Oh, that's the perfect way to end it. If I don't press yes. stop recording soon, we're just going to talk for the next four hours. <laughs> longest too. podcast episode <laughs> but, um you hit me for more in the intro thank you again gabe and i'm sure i'll have you back on at some stage oh yeah i'm always here i'm ready to go whenever hell yeah isn't gabe just the best gabe is so fun i love that dude i love all the people in cfg streams and all of that they're just really good people and i'm so humbled and honored to be able to be a part of that group because it's not something that i ever really thought that i would have the opportunity to do is have a group of people to hang out with on a regular basis we we just talk all the time it's so cool that i have best friends that are across the entire world pretty cool um gabe gave you all of his links i'll leave his twitter and stuff in the description below so you can um follow and all of that kind of stuff um if you want to follow me like i said at the top of the show links are in the description below i don't know why i'm holding this pen I really don't, Um, but links are in the description below. Um, Of course, I invite you to come and hang out with me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Josh Robinson double zero. It's really where I have the most fun and it's really cool to have people subscribed and all of this kind of stuff and all of the stuff that you can do on Twitch. So um, 
come and hang out with me. I'm doing more of different stuff and just kind of having a really grand time. Uh, be on the lookout for reverbs. Come back very, very soon. Five reasons why. All of the other things that I do, uh, of, of course, on Love Wrestling and everything else. And yeah, I love you all. Stay safe. Keep kicking ass and whatever you do. And um, yeah, I love you all. See you on the next one, folks. Oh, 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 oh,